Hey there, you nerd. Hey, hello there, everybody, my little gravy babies, and welcome back to more Victoria to a Heart of Darkness with the HPM Mark. Ah, I'm sure all you little clever boys have uh, gone ahead and read the title already, so you know what is coming today. After playing some Hearts of Iron 4 and looking through some uh, folk trees that nobody does, I want to go ahead and play some HPMs in Victoria 2, and obviously kind of figure out uh, what nations are kind of viable, but also at the same time, don't waste your time on. First off, I want to just say I'm sorry for the sporadic upload schedule, especially on this channel. Uh, there's not a lot I can really do about that. Uh, considering the uh, global situation right now, the uh, last thing I'm forcing myself to do when I don't want to do it is recording videos. Because obviously, we're all going a little insane inside, and uh, I don't want to force myself to become too insane because sometimes recording this stuff is actually a bit of a pain in the butt. And obviously, if you're wondering what I'm doing beside uploading to this YouTube channel, you, well, I don't really want to ruin the meta because a lot of people don't know. Uh, but a lot of people do know, and you're, uh, you're very special little boys, but let's just say I'm currently stuck between two personalities. <laughs> I mean, sorry, hold on, what are you on about? That guy's just, you know, he's copycat. Screw him! I'm the original! But if you want to go ahead and follow what I'm doing besides uploading to this channel, you can go ahead and follow my Instagram, which is BAM right there. Um, you, you can go ahead and follow that. I've been posting a whole bunch of footage from when me and Bo and Golden went to Japan. Which was that pose? A bit big, but I, I probably could suck him. <laughs> but obviously, uh, aside from all that, if you want to follow my Instagram and Twitter and whatnot, it'll be linked in the description, or you can just find it manually from my app, which I put on screen. But uh, I am trying to go ahead and do something special for you guys, because I know it's kind of hard right now in the world, and you're probably very bored stuck indoors. Anyway, 12 minutes of intro later. Sorry about that. It's just a lot I have to update on the world. But now we need to look at some countries in Victoria 2 that you might not have even looked at. Now, obviously, in Victoria 2, there are a whole bunch of countries for you to play as in the world in 1836 and most of these are already going to be emerging powers or great powers to start with of course you can go ahead and play some secondary powers and try to get them up to great power status but the reality of the situation is there's a whole lot of countries in the world that just end up being uh, kind of the thumb of someone else's colonization now Saying that, there are a few countries in the game that can be a little bit more fun, even if they don't start very powerful. And today I'm going to be covering those because, uh, well, not a lot of people, including myself, have really covered them. First off, we're going to be taking a trip to Colombia. Now, a lot of people already know that Colombia is actually completely viable already, and it's actually probably a pretty popular nation to play as because of the uh, decision to form Grand Colombia, which you don't actually have to be a great power to do, I believe. You just need to puppet by Venezuela and Ecuador. But you can go ahead and kind of take the advice of playing Colombia and kind of spread it across all of South America because they all are completely viable and so is any colonial nation. Because the fun thing about being a colonial nation, specifically one that passes a whole load of reforms, is that you get a whole bunch of immigration from Europe. Now obviously you do have to go ahead and compete with the Americans a whole bunch and other nations that might go ahead and do reforms, but for the most part you can go ahead and just get a whole bunch of immigrants and become a pretty powerful nation down here. But obviously if you want to go ahead and play Grand Columbia, the things that you want to do is not necessarily actually prestige spamming to great power, but simply just going ahead to focus on puppeting both Ecuador and Venezuela as quickly as possible. Economically, starting off as Colombia, you're probably not going to be doing, uh, well, you're not going to be doing too, too well, I'm going to put it bluntly. And uh, first thing I always do is go ahead and hold an election to get the liberals out of power so I can actually start taxing people. Oh, well, that was incredible. Okay, I just got to make a puppet uh, completely free on Venezuela and... I can tax the people, which means we're making a whole bunch of money. Now, think down Venezuela as quickly as possible is what I recommend, and usually you can try to get some alliances. You see here, I've got a few, and they will actually be willing to join the war, which you're probably going to need, because you are pretty much on equal footing, and you both, uh, both gonna have to mobilize. And you just want to uh, go ahead and hide out in the mountains with your actual army. If you can get some artillery going, feel free, but uh, as you can see, no one really wants to sell them to my rogue state in the South America. Now, it's not a fun war, to uh, put it bluntly, but if you can just catch them in the mountains, you usually can do yourself pretty well, and then you just follow their army around and stomp it. Alright, so after you've gone ahead and crushed their army, which you can do by simply just baiting them out with one of your little troops on a mountain province, and putting your actual army in, you will just want to watch out for provinces they're building troops in, which is this little guy here just smacking his anvil. 
Not entirely sure how that guy's making an army, but you know what? Fair play. Uh, it's just a case of uh, very slowly sieging down these provinces. They're gonna have to burn down their capital. I didn't even have to fully siege them. The Mexicans pieced them out for me, which always you want to be wary for. So if you do start losing the war, you might want to go ahead and reload because the Mexicans could go ahead and white piece you out. Uh, so just make some scummy uh, little shaves and uh, you should be fine. Now, because of that war though, my troops are not looking that great. So before we go on, on Ecuador, you might want to wait for that artillery to finally be built and then uh, uh, just replenish a little bit. Now, the puppeting uh, Cassus Belly is actually 10 infamy base, so uh, if you do get unlucky, you should still be able to get both of them pretty easy. It should. Right, Ecuador, we're not pulling any punches. Just drive whatever army you got left into this mountain province with their 3k peasants and hope for the best. Yeah. Yeah, that's about, that's about all I could expect from that, really. Now, with both of these bad boys puppeted, you just want to go ahead and sit around and, I don't know, teach people how to read or something like that until you can go ahead and do nationalism and imperialism. Hey, look at that. As soon as America goes to war with the Mexicans, who's stealing all of their immigration? That's right. It's Venezuela, Colombia, and Ecuador. A laugh script, but I uh, I did notice that the uh, Peruvians are actually at war with the Brazilians right now, and all their troops are dead, so we're just going to slide right in there and establish another puppet. There you go, 1854, you had to go ahead and prestige spam, I've completely forgot about that, you need to get 50 prestige, which is completely easy by just doing the prestige events, and boom, Grand Columbia, baby, look at it! Yeah, so here on out, you should be completely stable enough to go ahead and do quite a bit in the world. Uh, again, this isn't the only country you can really have a lot of fun with in South America, it does work very, very well for Brazil and Argentina too, so I recommend trying out either of these three nations for a bit of a different approach I'm playing Victoria too. But Grand Colombia is just the tip of our iceberg today because there are plenty of nations that people don't play uh, for very good reason. Ah, yes. Sokoto, 1836. Everything's very green. Uh, unfortunately though, not the not the green that matters. Hey. Sokoto is a long one, and a very, very tough one. And you are in a constant race against time to westernize before those pesky Europeans turn up and, uh, start chopping off my hands. But Sokoto is completely viable. You do actually have a bunch of decisions to actually do too, which are incredibly... Well, they, they kind of help you out a bit in the whole westernization thing, and, uh... Yeah, unfortunately, westernization is something that's going to be a bit tough for you. But my favorite thing about Sokoto is the your accepted populations. You actually have quite a few, and most importantly, you have Bedouin. Bedouin is a very good one to have, because there's a whole bunch of Bedouin people all around you. So yeah, you will find a whole bunch of Bedouin population all over this part of Africa, really. And most importantly, if you manage to do it, there is a whole bunch in Egypt. Now, obviously, that's a little bit far off, because... Uh, we got a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of stuff to do before we get anywhere near that. Oh, you know, it's not the, it's not the least stable economy I've ever seen, really. All right, but first off, you want to get access to the sea, and uh, to do that, you're easily gonna be able to stomp any of these nations over here because you start with a pretty nice uh, army. Albeit irregulars, but you know what? You, you can't choose them. I'm apparently having all the luck in the world today's playthrough because I just got this one for free, and that was a conquest one, so that could have been like 20 something infamy right there. Mm. Ah, muy caliente! Oh my god, I am getting lucky today. Is that another conquest caster's belly for free? Ah! Uh, now, actually, we're gonna do something a little bit unorthodox this time around, and we're gonna go for the Western Shipyards first, which seems a little crazy if you have a Western Isles and HBM before, but, uh, I got an idea. We need to build a naval base. <sighs> now, you might think that I'm crazy. And you would be right. Uh, again, you're gonna think I'm crazy, but we're also gonna do foreign training methods because it gives you a research points bonus when conquering 25%, which we're gonna need. Oh, shucks. I really wonder where those Sokotan soldiers are going. Oh. If you said Uruguay, you'd be right! <laughs> so yeah, taking out Uruguay, pretty smart move. Mostly because uh, if you annex them... Oh, I can enslave them too. <laughs> do I enslave... No, I, I do not want to enslave the Uruguay. <laughs> but essentially, you get yourself a whole fun a bunch of uh, free research points, because I think I just got like 3 or 4k from that. So uh, it, it kind of pays off, plus you get yourself a nice little state. And if you want to <laughs> enslave the Uruguayans... <laughs> 
More power to you! Now, eventually, because you're westernizing, you will get a whole bunch of reactionaries rise up, but uh, you should be able to take them down very easy, because you can go ahead and get a fat army, even if they are all irregulars and horsemen. Now, usually what you want to do to go ahead and speed up your uh, westernization is simply take the education ones, but because education actually costs a lot of money if you're a primitive nation, I can't even fully fund it without going into the negative. What I'm going to do is go for land reform first, which should hopefully help my economy out a little bit. There you go. Look at that. Green line, go up. Uh, yeah, now with that uh, in the bag, I can go ahead and keep funding my my uh, education just a little bit more. You know what I mean? Just teaching, uh, <laughs> teaching the Argentinians a lesson about colonization. But now taking out that one Argentinian province gave me a whole bunch of research points. So that's, uh, that's kind of what you want to do. You just want to start beating up everyone you can in South America, really. Also, uh, I completely forgot that you actually get a free cast of spell against these guys to restore order, which means once we annex them, we might actually have enough research points to finish westernizing where we have 14k. Oh, 3k off and we're done. Boom. So just after 30 so years, 30 or 40 years of playing the game, Sokoto is a free nation. One that can read. Well, 11% of the population can. And Hey, look at that, 1903, the day Sokoto became the 8th great power in the world. So yeah, unlike many European nations, this one's kind of a bit odd, especially the way you go about conquering and making your, uh, well, your, your, your name on the map, quite literally. Uh, but nonetheless, I think it's an incredibly fun game, especially if you're not really aiming for just conquering the entire world and being the one great power, you can just become a kind of intermediate power that can have a lot of potential and expanding in different directions. Direction. So yeah, number two, Sokoto. Recommend 10 out of 10, fun as hell. All right, next up, this one is a little bit different. Yeah, that's right, it's Austria. No one's ever played them, but just kidding. It's Czechoslovakia. Now, it doesn't exist on the map to start with, but you can release it if you go ahead and play Austria first. Now, the Czechs, for the most part, will be playing completely different than uh, most countries I think we've ever covered, really. You see, because you're kind of already an intermediate power, one that can quickly rise to great power status by the simple fact you have a huge population that can read. <laughs> and on top of that, you just so happen to be sitting on literal gold. That's a whole bunch of coal and a whole bunch of iron. Now, I won't be going into too much detail on exactly how Czechoslovakia will work other than the simple fact that you should just try it, but um, yeah, I'm already on to number 12 great power, right, or 12 secondary power right now, almost a great power is what I'm trying to say, and it's pretty much a powerful state. That's all you need to know. The only things I would recommend is allying Russia immediately, and if you can't ally Russia, well, um... <sighs> probably gonna die. But yeah, securing your great power ally is the first thing you should do before the Austrians decide to come kick your teeth in again. Um, so yeah, that's the only thing you really need to worry about. And after that, it's um, just free land. As soon as you get great power, you can start kicking the Austrians and the uh, Prussians out of, you know, Germany so you can conquer some land or you can just sit where you are. And for the rest of the game, just become an economic arms deal uh, throughout all of Europe. <laughs> But hey, you know, it's a different way to play Victoria 2. It's pretty fun. You get yourself a whole bunch of nice resources and it's kind of chill, relaxing and a bit more RP than, uh, you know, just playing as a great power like Great Britain or, you know, France, Russia or whatnot and just, you know, painting the map. But yeah. Czechoslovakia. Might do a full playthrough on this one, just, uh, you know, on its own, because uh, I feel like, you know, I want to show it off. But uh, until then, uh, let's move on to the next one. This one is definitely like a, a good 7 out of 10. Now, our last nation, or should I say nations, is actually everything releasable from Great Britain Dominion-wide. First off, we have Canada, which uh, if you do players, you kind of want to do it a bit differently than what's going on right here. So yeah, unfortunately Canada doesn't have to start with claws on everything at the start of the game, which is a bit annoying, but not the worst thing in the world. So yeah, to play as Canada properly, what you want to do is first off get into the game and activate then this, and uh, there they go. Canada is now a thing, but you want to keep them under your uh, little, little puppet thing first, because we've still got to give them more land. And next up, you just want to go ahead and activate 44320 and we can offer them a bunch of land. Look at that. Canada's a big boy now. And there we go. So what else I did was release Quebec 
and the Maritime Union, and I'm pretty sure they will get events to simply join Canada at a later date. And then once you've done that, you just want to tag switch over to Canada, and boom, it's time to start the playthrough. Hey, there you go. As soon as I tag switched over to them, Quebec is, uh, well, they're, they're part of me now. Now, for the most part, obviously, you're still a British Dominion, but you are in North America, which means you get a whole bunch of, you know, people coming over to come start a new life in... Quebec! On top of this, you start with your nice, healthy 50% literacy rate, which is great. You get a whole bunch of nice resources, spawn late game. You've even got a little bit of iron there to start with. And for the most part, it's essentially just becoming America, but kind of early. Uh, on top of that, you can also go ahead and uh, if you make it to great power, which isn't that hard, if you just go ahead and uh, prestige spam as usual, you immediately become free from Great Britain, uh, as far as I'm aware. So it is uh, really not a bad game to play um it's fun it's different uh you kind of got a whole bunch of land to have fun with and you can kick america's butt pretty easy again i don't think i've done a canada playthrough on the channel but uh considering i haven't done one before i might go ahead and give it a go if you guys want to see that uh, obviously i'm not going to do it now i've already spent all day playing Sokoto, so uh yeah personally i'd give them a good eight out of ten definitely a fun nation to players and now we moved on to our very last one that's right it may not be an unknown nation or one that people haven't played, but Australia is an incredibly fun nation because once again, just like Canada and any other like New World nation, you get a whole bunch of immigration constantly coming towards you. On top of that, you get a whole bunch of gold constantly spawning in your country along with oil and I think maybe rubber. All of that combined uh, puts you in about 1880 and you pretty much have the ability to take on a, a whole bunch of Asia. You can start going into China or even, you know, beating up Japan a little bit. And with all the money from the gold, you get a whole bunch more immigrants. It's, it's a fun game. I've already covered this one on the channel, though. And I highly recommend you check that out. So yeah, that's going to be the uh, last one for today. Uh, obviously, if you want to see more about Australia in depth, there is a video on my channel already. Um, but I think I've shown off a few nations that you may not have thought about playing, like Sokoto and Gran Colombia. Although the Gran Colombia one doesn't really count because you could do that as Brazil or Argentina and Canada, of course. Uh, gotta check that bad boy out and Czechoslovakia again strong nations that are kind of hidden inside of a nation so especially if you release them at the start of the game now this is just the very tippy top of the nations that I think are the most fun to release and play or starters and play uh, there are a few more that I want to cover that aren't that simple <laughs> like you know Persia we already did Afghanistan again Afghanistan would have been in there China. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm gonna leave those for another day. But uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like, hit the subscribe button down below, follow my Instagram, Twitter, and blah blah blah. You you know the drill. It's all in the description. Um, and you know what? I think I'll probably turn up one of these on Victoria too, because I I do want to show off Persia, China, and uh, I want to show off Korea too. But that's gonna be something else, alright? But uh, yeah, until next time, guys. Uh, I don't know. Stay indoors have your government mandated exercise time. Don't question it. <laughs>